VelociCoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure is my new number one coaster. Going into VelociCoaster, I was expecting an amazing ride, but what I got out of it was absolutely incredible. It amazes me how I had the highest expectations for a coaster I've ever had, and yet I was still outrageously surprised by what this coaster had to offer. Velocicoaster is an Intamin Blitz roller coaster located at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. Built in 2021 and opened in June 10th of 2021, this ride is critically acclaimed to be one of the best roller coasters ever created. Combined with the theming that this ride has and the amazing ride experience, many people call this their number one coaster, or at least it's in their top five. At the time of this recording, I got the chance to ride Velocicoaster three days in a row on Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, and yesterday, Monday, December 27th. Now, I've ridden this coaster five times, front, middle, and back, and today I'm going to tell you why I love and praise Velocicoaster so much. Starting off with the presentation of Velocicoaster, and this might be the most well-presented roller coaster on the planet. The ride's plaza has some beautiful landscaping, and you have some great views of the ride's entrance and Velocicoaster itself. Located next to Velocicoaster is the Discovery Center, and there is a restaurant inside, and while you're eating, you can really hear Velocicoaster's roar, and you get some great views of it too. Now, with a remarkable entrance, there must be some remarkable theming, right? Well, you will be right, as this ride has some of the most incredible theming ever done on a roller coaster. Now, what is the theme for this ride? Well, the roller coaster itself is themed to, well, a roller coaster. It's themed that you're in Jurassic World, and they decided to put a roller coaster in the Raptor Paddock. It's a pretty simple theme, but, you know, it works well, and that is really the only thing that matters. Now, one of my favorite parts of the ride's theming is the bouquet of raptors located in the first room. This set is just a spectacle to look at. The detail on the raptors is just incredible. So that's the first room, so what does the second room look like? Now in the second room, you get a great view of the second launch, and when a train goes by, projections of raptors start following the train. You know, they could have just put a regular window here, but with all the raptors, it makes you really feel that you are actually going to enter the paddock. The amount of thought that went into the theming for this ride is just incredible. Then, you enter the third room, which is a projection of Dr. Wu from the movies explaining the science behind the ride and how the raptors are kept and the safety features that the ride has. Now, you won't have a whole lot of time to take in this theming as you'll be moving pretty quickly throughout the line, but it's still a nice touch. So then, you enter the third room, which in my opinion is the best room of them all. You encounter these raptor animatronics, and these might be the most realistic animatronics I have ever seen. Even when it quote unquote breathes, you can actually feel the air coming out of its nose. It really does look like they actually put a raptor in the paddock, and that is one thing that I absolutely love about this ride's theming. The amount of detail that went into it is just absolutely incredible. So then, you enter the fifth room, and this is where you will be putting all of your loose articles into lockers. That means phones, wallets, and keys. Now, I don't have any footage of the sixth room, which is a pre-show of Claire and Chris Pratt or Owen Grady bickering about whether this is a good idea, and I really enjoyed it. This is one of the best pre-shows of all time, and it actually really does make you chuckle or maybe even laugh out loud because Chris Pratt is just so funny in this. Then, right afterwards, you enter the ride station. Now, the ride station isn't too well-themed as it's mostly just a modern take on regular stations, but on the left side, you do have a nice window, which looks over into the ride's first half. Now, there's one more thing I would like to talk about about the ride's theming, and that are the ride's trains. Now, these might be some of the best roller coaster trains ever designed. First of all, they are incredibly comfortable and accommodate all guests. These trains feature the over-the-shoulder lap bars, and they are incredibly comfortable. These trains especially look good at night, as they have an incredible lighting package. Now, the presentation of Velocicoaster is absolutely stunning, and it will definitely add to the ride's final score. Now, let's get into the ride experience itself. 
To start off the ride, you hit the ride's first launch, which launches you from 0 to 50 miles an hour in just 2 seconds. And this launch has a very nice kick to it. It almost feels like you start accelerating halfway through, and that is a weird sensation as halfway through the launch track you just immediately get pinned to your seat. Then you're hit with a nice head chopper with the rock work before entering your first inversion, the Immelman. If you're in the front row, you get some decent hang time, but if you're in the back, you get some good whip going down and a nice pop of air time. Then you dive down, hitting another head chopper with the ride's rock work before going into the ride's second inversion, the dive loop. Now, this dive loop actually really reminded me of the ones on the RMC Raptors, as if you're in the front row, you get a great pop of air time, while if you're in the back, you get some great whip on the descents. Then you dive down and then hit a sharp right hand turn for entering one of the ride's best airtime moments. This small ejector hill. This hill gives a great pop of ejector airtime no matter where you sit. After the ejector hill, you traverse a series of S bends, dives, and dips over rock work and around theming. Many people would call this section boring, but I'm actually on the contrary, as these elements are just pure fun. Now, during this entire section, you're getting incredible head choppers and some great views of the theming. Now, there are actually some raptor statues in this paddock, and it's actually really cool to see them. But you have to keep your eyes peeled as you're moving so fast you can't really take in your surroundings. This ride section is just pure fun and really gets you hyped up for the second half, which is the real treat. So you hit a few more turns before rolling into the second launch, and let me just tell you, this launch in the front row is incredible. When you're in the front row, the wind in your face is incredible as you actually start tearing up. And in the front row, it also does have some really decent force. It's not anything like King Ka or Top Doll Dragster, but it's just pure fun. But unfortunately, if you're in the back row, this launch is kind of a dud. You don't really feel the wind in your face, and it doesn't have much force in the back row. I'm actually really curious as to why it doesn't have as much force as the front row. Now, after that launch, you are blasted with positive Gs as you rise up into the ride's top hat. If you're in the front row, you get a good pop of ejector airtime cresting the top hat. And if you're in the back, going down it, you get some good sustained ejector airtime. Now unfortunately, the top hat does have a trim on it, and it will slow you down quite a bit, but it does not inhibit the ride experience in any way. If anything, it allows you to take in the views from up top, and the views from up top are incredible. But you want a very long to take it all in, as all of a sudden you are plummeting down the 150 foot tall drop. Then all of a sudden, you are blasted with positive Gs as you quickly turn into the ride's third inversion. This zero-g stall offers some glorious hang time as you are hanging upside down for a few seconds. Then you take a right hand turn over the water before going into the most underrated element on the ride, the wave turn. When people talk about Velocicoaster, they almost always talk about the Mosasaurus roll, the top hat, or the zero-g stall, and no one really talks about the wave turn. And let me just tell you, this element is absolutely glorious. The entire train will get a good pop of ejector airtime throughout this wave turn, and it's not weak ejector, it's very strong ejector. Then you fly into this twisted outer bank airtime hill, and this element really didn't give much airtime, as much as just gave good laterals. And to be 100% honest, this is the only really element on the ride that actually kind of disappointed me. But don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad element at all, it's actually really great and gives some good laterals. Then, you take another right hand turn over the water before entering an overbank, which does blast you with some good positive Gs before entering a speed hill. This element only really gives a good pop of floater, but it's just a warm up for the insanity that is about to come. Then you fly into the world famous Mosasaurus roll. What is easily the best inversion I have ever experienced is probably one of the best elements I have ever experienced. First of all, have you ever gotten ejector airtime on an inversion? Well, you're gonna get it here. Second of all, this element is so whippy and aggressive, and the fact that it's over water, you feel like you're gonna fly out of your seat. People say that if Maverick's Heartline roll had existed, this is what it would feel like. In all rows, this thing is just pure insanity. 
Then you get one last pop of airtime in a switchback hill before rising into the final breaks, ending your 4,700 foot ride of craziness. Now, there's one more thing I would like to talk about with Velocicoaster, and that is the ride's smoothness. Seeing as Velocicoaster is less than a year old, it is still running glossy smooth. There is not one bump, rattle, or pothole this ride has to offer, and that makes it a very re-rideable and comfortable ride experience. Now, what would I rate Velocicoaster? If you haven't already guessed, I'm giving this ride a 10 out of 10. This ride is just pure perfection. Now, one more thing to note, this is definitely a front row ride. You get the superior visuals and the better airtime in my opinion. And that second launch is absolutely magical in the front. So it looks like that is going to do it for my review on Velocicoaster. What did you think of this review? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, what are your thoughts on Velocicoaster? It is also your number one favorite coaster, or is it up there? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you enjoy the content, make sure to like, comment, or subscribe as it really helps the channel out. Now, without further ado, like, comment, and subscribe if you have the time, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.